If you're like me, you probably grew up learning how to save your money. But investing? Uh, no. No one taught me growing up how to actually make money grow. And what's interesting is, is have you ever tried to work out how long it would take you if you actually started to save money today to actually become a millionaire one day? Try doing the maths. Let's make some hypothetical examples. How long would it take you if you saved 10 pounds every single day to become a millionaire? I did the maths and it works out to be 274 years, which is insane. In fact, if you saved a thousand pounds every single month, it will still take you around 83 years in order for you to become a millionaire. So that must tell us something, that saving money really is not the way to go about it, especially given today, the returns we get on saving our money in a normal savings account, typically around 0.1% thereabouts. So in order for us to hit those high goals of potentially becoming millionaires one day, how else should we go about doing it? Today I'm gonna to speak to you about how to become a millionaire saving and investing 10 pounds per day. My name is Ken of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. What we do on this channel is to give you the tips, the insights, the practical hacks to help you work towards a dream life of financial independence and money joy. I'm using this example of 10 pounds because it's something that pretty much everybody can relate to, okay? If I said to you 10 pounds per day works out to be 300 pounds per month, a lot of people can relate to that. That number seems highly realistic. But if I told you that it's actually possible for you to invest that money every single month consistently in the right environment over a long-term period for you to hit a million pounds, would you believe that? Well, today we're gonna to dive into that and illustrate to you how you can go about doing that exactly and more importantly, what you need to do next in order to take those steps and begin building up to potentially one day becoming a millionaire. Okay, so to make this video super practical and fun, I've done some scenarios which I'm gonna put up on the screen at various intervals, just to kind of demonstrate to you the impact of what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna use specific examples just to demonstrate what I mean here. So I've written some, got some things on my iPad which I'm gonna read out to you, okay? So let's imagine that you have decided that, right, I'm gonna take care on this challenge, I'm gonna start putting away 10 pounds per day and I'm gonna save that money. Okay, I'm gonna save that money. Let's say you started to do that. 10 pounds per day is about 300 pounds per month. If you put that money aside and put it into your savings account, right, making 0.1% interest, for example, if you started saving that money and saved it for the next 40 years, right, next 40 years, the returns you'd expect on your money will be a final value of around 146,000 924 pounds, which will include total deposits of your 300 pounds each month of 144,000, with interest earned of only 2,924 pounds. Just think about that. 40 years of saving your money in your savings account at 0.1% gave you only 146,000 pounds after 40 years of saving that money in your account. Now let's look at a scenario where we keep all the variables exactly the same. Okay, let's assume there's a two family. So family number one was just saving their money and that's it. They're scared of investing through the stock market. And they thought to themselves, nah, it's not for us. Let's just save our money because it's nice and safe, apparently. Okay, so they've been doing that and that's what they end up with. But look at family number two. Now try and put yourself and decide over the course of this video which family you want to become because this really matters in helping you take action to start to invest your money. Family number two have chosen to invest their money through the stock market. Let's assume that they're investing their money in the S&P 500, so the Standard & Poor's 500 uh, index, okay? So they're doing that because they want to get themselves exposed to high returns from investing in US focused equities, okay? So the S&P 500, I'm gonna read here, since 1957, through to 2018, looking at that period, for example, has returned roughly 8% per cent 
as an average annual return. This is before you factored in inflation. So worth making that very important point about inflation. But let's just use that number. Just for illustration purposes, 8% return. Let's assume that family number two invested their money through the stock market and focused specifically on the US equities market, okay? And maybe had most of their allocation in equities towards that particular index, okay? I've done some numbers on that, just gonna show you what I'm talking about. 8%, assuming 300 pounds per year, over a period of 40 years, returns a total final investment of 1 million pounds and 54,000. 1 million and 54, with total contributions, monthly deposits of only 144,000, with the vast majority of that 1 million and 54,000 return coming from compounding interest, i.e. money working and money over time, a total of around 910,000 pounds coming from money working money over time. Just think about that. I mean, that's such a simplistic analysis. Uh, and, you know, it just, it just really boggles the mind to think, wow, the money placed in the right environment can work on itself and build upon itself and become a life-changing sum over time. So the key ingredients are time for money to compound as well as money being placed in the right environment in order to generate those high returns. Now, I can hear many people going, oh, Ken, where exactly are you gonna find those handsome returns you just talked about? I mean, who's paying you 8% these days anyway? Well, I went and had a look, because we invest in some of these assets that pay quite, have paid quite good returns over time. So here, looking at my, my, uh, my investments, I actually went on the Vanguard website, and you can look at any other provider uh, for an S&P 500, uh, tracking fund, a fund that essentially tracks S&P 500 index. Uh, at Vanguard, for example, they've got one. Uh, the code being VUSA VUSA, which you can look up for yourself. And I'm going to put it up on the screen for you to see, actually, because it really does show you. I mean, I'm looking here over from 2012 to present day. And the returns vary. 2013, total return of 31.87%. 2014, 13.25%. 2015, 1%. 2016, 11.51%, and it carries on like that up to 2017, 21.37%, and 2018, it dropped to minus 4.76%. I'm reading those numbers out to you just so you can kind of get a sense for the reality of investing your money. And this is with investing your money in this particular fund over the last few years, for example. Now, of course, I'm fully aware that this does not tell us what's gonna happen in the future. But you know, the average returns, which I read out to you at the very beginning of this video for the S&P 500 as an index, as an example, has shown us that if you put your money exposed, when you think about your asset allocation with you know, a fair decent amount of it, at least 50% allocated to equities and put in the right environment, such as the S&P 500, for example, over a period of time and through compounding, so you get you know, returns building up and re being reinvested and compounding over time. By doing that, you can expect to generate a decent return, you know, six, seven, eight percent over time, provided you're leaving that money working for you over the years to help you work towards that possibility of becoming a millionaire over time. You know, doing this exercise really made me think about a few things, okay? In this example, I've talked to you about you know, the possibility of you saving for family to saving and investing £10 per month, okay? Uh, in the first scenario, the family only saved their money and barely got any returns. And the second scenario, the family saved their money and invested it and generated a decent return, say, over a hypothetical period of time, okay? Now, what family would you like to be? I know for certain I'd love to be that family investing that money. And that's what we've done over the last decade. And it's really drastically changed our lives in so many ways. And I think investing is something that I don't need to convince you to do. In fact, it's something that, you know, if you don't actually invest your money, what happens by you leaving your money in your bank account is that you lose purchasing power to inflation. So essentially what you should be aiming for, the mindset is looking to invest your money in an environment that generates for you an above inflation rate of return. In effect, a real rate of return to make sure that the purchasing power of your money 
is retained over time. You know, the other thing that really occurred to me as I thought about that example is, you know, a lot of people can, if they really adjusted their lifestyles, save £10 per day and invest £10 per day, which is £300 per month. Now, imagine a scenario where you actually, beyond you putting aside money from your salary, actually did something else on the side, perhaps through a side hustle, which then started to generate for you around £300 per month in addition, such that you're able to save and invest around £600 per month at, in an environment where it generates for you a decent return. Let's have a look at that scenario, which I did, just kind of demonstrate what's possible. Here we're looking at a scenario where we're investing £600 per month, again generating a nominal return of 8%. You need to factor in inflation for the real return, but a nominal return of 8% over the same period of 40 years, right? And I've looked at the returns that you generate from that and put up on the screen for you to see as well. You'd see that the final investment value over a period of 40 years would be around £2.1 million okay with the total amount you're actually depositing over those 40 years being only 288,000 and the vast majority of that return that you're getting assuming an 8% return for example being 1.8 million pounds coming from the capital returns from your money growing over time as well as you reinvest in dividends and those dividends compounding over time. You know, this just says so much to us. If you've been watching this channel for some time, you'd know that I'm a huge fan of side hustles or anything that means that we're building enough for us to put away in savings and invest in the right environment. I really hope this video has encouraged you, if you're somebody who's been sitting on the fence about investing their money, to realize that investing is the most efficient way for you to build wealth over time because no amount of saving will help you to become a millionaire in this lifetime. As I read out those numbers to you at the beginning, you know, you wouldn't be around to see yourself become a millionaire. So if it's something you really want to achieve in your own lifetime, then investing is the vehicle you need to build up your wealth over time for you to become a millionaire one day. The final point I wanted to make is around children. And I'm speaking now to parents or people who are looking to have children in the very near future. The key advantage that children have, you know, compared to us adults is that they have time on their hands. You know, here we're talking in this example uh, over a 40 year period. And if you've got children, it's highly likely they'll be the people who will be around over such a time horizon to see themselves become a millionaire one day. So, you know, think about that from your own perspective. Would you like your children to become millionaires one day. If that's the case, then the numbers are quite simple. I've demonstrated to you that £10 per day, you know, in the right environment, over assuming a decent average return over a long term period of time, is what you need to become a millionaire. And you can take those steps to help your children one day also start way ahead and become millionaires themselves one day. Okay, so I'll end this video now by just summarizing the key points for you to take away. And here are the key points. Investing is a much faster and a much more efficient way for you to build wealth over time and become a millionaire one day potentially. Point two is that it's all about the long-term investing. So don't think about investing as a short-term thing, think about it as a long-term thing. And those returns I talked about, your 7%, your 8%, are the sort of average returns that you will generate assuming a long-term horizon of at least 20 years. Point three is that it's all about consistent investing. So you can't invest this month and then next month say to yourself, oh, I don't feel like investing any longer. The key is to focus on investing no matter the weather, whether you've got recessions happening, whether you've got booms happening. The key is for you to be buying in every single month. And this process known as dollar cost or pound cost averaging helps you to diversify your risk over time and give you access to assets at different prices over the years as you keep on investing consistently. The fourth principle is to have a higher proportion of your investing in equities, okay? So a very simple asset allocation to allocate a proportion to equities and a proportion to bonds. A simple rule of thumb is for you to look at, say, the number 100 less your current age 
as the amount you should invest in equity. So if you're say, let's say you're 30 years old today, 100 less 30 as a rule of thumb would mean that you should really be looking to invest around 70% of your money in equities and the other percentage in bonds because bonds are necessary for offering you that diversification, helping to remove some of that volatility tied to you investing your money purely in equities. The fifth principle is to remember that inflation is a big deal and will always be factored in when you're looking at nominal returns. You need to factor those in uh, in order for you to arrive at the real rate of return on your money. The sixth point is that where you invest your money and how much you invest each month matters. So seek the right environment to generate the right returns for your money as well as look for alternative ways beyond your day job to generate some extra money to boost those savings and increase the amount that you invest every single month. And the final point beyond you working towards becoming a millionaire one day is for you to also think about your children and help them because they have the time horizon for money to really get to work, to generate those returns and help them to potentially become millionaires one day. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video today on how to become a millionaire by investing just 10 pounds per day. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. So it really helps to encourage a ton more people to engage with our videos. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notifications bell so you get notified when we publish our videos, typically twice a week on a Tuesday as well as a Thursday. We've created so many investing videos. Uh, feel free to check them out. Everything from how to get started with investing, how to invest with dividend income, how to invest for your children, how to analyze a stock. I'm gonna put all those videos in the links for you to check out and get started with building the confidence towards investing your own money for the future. Take care and I look forward to seeing you again on our next video. Bye bye for now.